Hello, everyone. I hope you are enjoying this year's virtual San Diego Comic-Con. My name is Liz Melcher, and I'm a talent executive for Travel Channel, where I work closely with our amazing roster of on-air hosts and experts. I'm so excited to moderate this incredible panel that we have in store for you today, featuring a few of the most amazing women in paranormal. We've got paranormal investigators, researchers, explorers, and a psychic medium who are on the front lines when it comes to hunting ghosts and investigating truly terrifying places. I've known these bold women for quite a while and can tell you they don't back down from a haunting. They look fear right in the eye and keep going. With every investigation, they're also breaking new ground for women in this area, challenging gender roles, and redefining what it means to be tough and fearless in the face of the unexplained. As host of Travel Channel's most popular series, we're gonna hear from these superstars directly about their experiences, biggest challenges, scariest moments, and any advice they have for any of you who might wanna get involved in this field. We invite everyone at home watching to share your experience today by tagging at Travel Channel and using hashtag WonderWomenTRVL in your posts. Now let's take a quick look at who these incredible women are. Gotta go. Let's make it happen. Do you know why we're here? There's definitely a ghost in our house. You ready to roll? Yep. Uh oh, let's make it feel the case in the skies, but fear in their eyes. Burn it down. Let's burn this house. Can I just say that this was not what I expected? When I started out, I wanted answers for myself. And then it became about helping people. It's such an emotional roller coaster. I'm getting goosebumps just hearing this, and I'm a true believer that everything happens for a reason. This is one of those places I've always wanted to investigate. The biggest misconception of the paranormal is that we know what it is. I've honestly never seen anything like it. What we do can change people's lives if we give them that power. I don't trust this. Hello? Something's just not right. That's not a coincidence. Cindy's reading validates a lot of the questions. That's not everything. I'm looking at her right now as our glue to put our puzzle together. Her death was not an accident. <gasps> Ooh. This is way more layered than we ever expected it to be. There's somebody who helped her do it. There's more to the story. That was crazy. Keep watching. We'll make you a believer. Now let me introduce you to our panelists. First up, we have paranormal researcher and investigator Katrina Weidman. In the hit series Portals to Hell, Katrina, along with her co-host Jack Osborne, investigate some of the darkest places on earth. And she's dedicated her life to paranormal research and lecturing in this field. Please welcome Katrina Weidman. Hey guys. Next, we're thrilled to have with us veteran paranormal investigator and researcher, Amy Bruni from the popular series, Kindred Spirits. Along with her co-host, Adam Berry, Amy, who also serves as co-executive producer on the show, helps those tormented by paranormal activity by giving a voice to the dead. Please welcome Amy Bruni. Hey, thanks for having me. <laughs> And bringing her unique skills to the table is Cindy Keza, a psychic medium with a gift for connecting with the dead. Cindy stars in The Holzer Files, where along with Dave Trader and Shane Pittman, she reopens the case files for America's first ghost hunter, Hans Holzer. You may have also seen her alongside Katrina in a few episodes of Portals to Hell, but you can usually find her with a notepad and a Sharpie as she's best known for her automatic writing skills in which she allows spirits to communicate directly through her via freeform writing. Please welcome Cindy Keza. Hey, everybody. And last but not least is the newest member of the Travel Channel family, Chelsea Layden. As a paranormal explorer, Chelsea stars in Destination Fear. Along with her brother Dakota and friend Tanner, she has spent more days than I'm sure she would have liked on a terrifying cross-country road trip to America's scariest locations. And get this, she spends the night alone. So please welcome Chelsea Layden. Hi guys, thanks for having me. Thank you all for being here today. I'm so excited to be here with you. So let's get right into it. Let's start with a little bit about your backgrounds. I'd love to hear how each of you got started in paranormal. So Katrina, why don't you kick it off? Yeah, so I have the, I mean, really basic 101 ghost hunting background, background story. Um, I grew up in haunted houses, and so from the time I was very, very young, I had experiences, and 
it's interesting because my parents were um, total opposites when it came to this. My mom is a full on believer. My dad is a full on skeptic. So I think I got a good dose from both sides, which probably explains a lot about, you know, my investigating style. Um, so I was never really told not to believe it, but I wasn't necessarily encouraged to explore it. So it left me with a lot of questions. And as I grew up, you know, I would read all the books. I would read about Lorraine Warren and Hans Holzer. And um, when I got to college, they had a club and I signed up for that club. I dropped out and then I went back. And uh, when I went back, they had an investigating course that you could take and I took that. I was telling a friend the other day, you know, if any, <laughs> If any of us had said when we were kids, I'm going to be a professional paranormal investigator. I mean, <laughs> nobody would have co-signed on our student loans. You know what I mean? Like it's, it, it's a very weird and random job to have, but it's very cool. What about you, Amy? I had an intense interest in ghosts as a child because I, I grew up in a haunted house. And I feel like there's that's a very common denominator in a lot of investigators. Um, but my parents were just really into ghosts themselves and they never told me that ghosts were something to be afraid of. And so, um, I, my dad used it as kind of a teachable moment. He would take me to like historical locations that were haunted and I would learn history and also look for ghosts at the same time. And then, you know, later on I started working, um, on a paranormal podcast you know, I met the guys from Ghost Hunters through that and then ended up on that show and then met Adam, who we're now on Kindred Spirits together. And so it just kind of all came full circle. It was one of those things like every, you know, something new would happen in the paranormal world for me continually. And it's been, I mean, I've been doing this on TV for 13 years now, which is insane to think about. <laughs> so. And what about you, Chelsea? For me, believe it or not, I also lived in a hot house growing <laughs> up. Um, for those of, you know, anyone who watches this show, it just looks like, you know, I'm chasing the paranormal and, you know, but really that's not how it started at all. Paranormal kind of found us essentially first. It's funny because the paranormal world is so connected. You know, everyone knows somebody who knows somebody and it's, it's a really unique community um, and it's awesome. And my brother, who is the I'm one of the producers on the show. Um, he is also the co-star of that as well. And he is the one who really pushed me to um, really, really outside of my comfort zone when he started the documentary Trail to Terror, um, which is, was really my big first leap into like extreme paranormal. It was like outside of the house. It was like, wow, like these big, huge, notoriously haunted places. I like, like everyone else mentioned, never in a million years could have pictured myself doing these things. And then what about you, Cindy? Because I think you have, I think it's a combo question of how did you get involved in paranormal and then how did you know you had a gift? Yeah, it's a little bit different for me. I've had the ability to feel spirits around me since I was very young. The first experience I remember, I was around 10. So it began with me really cultivating my mediumistic abilities. And honestly, I never thought I would be in the paranormal field on paranormal television. And although mediumship and paranormal are under the same umbrella, they're actually almost two separate worlds. And then when I had the opportunity to be on a paranormal show, it was really exciting for me because I was able to really use all of these things I've been studying um, all of these years. I mean, automatic writing, psychometry, remote viewing. So being in the paranormal field has been a really cool opportunity for me to really be able to expand and use all these things I've been spending all these years trying to develop. I love that. I love that. And I think that that's so interesting that um, you have this whole other skill set that you're able to use all these other tools when you're when you're working on your show and then other shows that you're you know we've worked with Katrina before on mm -hmm. on portals. I love that. So you've also you've all done groundbreaking work in this field to help further the understanding around paranormal. It's what you guys said. It's it, you've been fueled by your curiosity, and I think as a female, your role is is even more powerful because it's a predominantly male world, the, the paranormal investigation world. So from your experience, what does it mean to be a woman in the genre, both on and off screen? Um, Chelsea, what do you think? Yeah, um, you know, I feel like I've always been blessed and like put in situations where it is more of a male dominant field. Prior to the show, I actually played professional ice hockey and that was a very male dominated sport 
and now being on the show where, you know, I'm staying alone, sleeping alone at some of the most haunted, um, notoriously haunted places in America, you know, that's, that's not the typical thing you think of when you think of a woman on TV. <laughs> and, um, you know, I think it's just so important for women pioneers in general, whether any field, to just um, encourage one another to push the limits wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and to show each other that we're more capable of doing the things that scare us and the things that really push us outside of our comfort zones. What do you think, Amy? I mean, well, first of all, I love that there are enough women on Travel Channel uh, that we were able to have this panel because I think that um, I think that the the paranormal field um, is thought of as being very male dominated because I think that for a long time on TV, that's what people saw was a lot of guys chasing ghosts. But when you really get out there, it's a very female driven field. Um, mm -hmm. When you actually get out there and start meeting paranormal teams and going to events and investigations. Um, and so I love seeing that um, be more represented um, on the entertainment side of things as well. So I just kudos to travel because I think this is huge. I love that. And then what about you, Cindy? I think the field of mediumship on its own is very female dominated, but the paranormal field seems to be more male dominated. But what I love about being able to be on a paranormal show is I can bring my ability and actually open up uh, the eyes of a lot of men to how mediumship really works because I think there's this kind of idea that all mediums are very sensitive and we get so overwhelmed and we can't handle these really scary things, but we can, we're badass, right? So we can just <laughs> yes. go in and do the same stuff, but also it's about educating people about what mediumship really looks like and to be able to bring it to this platform, I think is such a cool opportunity. And also to be surrounded by so many really strong women, it's, a, it's awesome. Very cool. And then Katrina, what about you? Yeah. Um, I mean, well, I agree with what everyone else has said so far. And, you know, like Amy, that's been my experience too, where when you get into the actual paranormal field, it is more female driven. Um, it's just, I don't think the media has always portrayed that. And when they have portrayed women in, in the media, it's a very specific type of woman. It's a woman who, you know, they're portrayed as screaming, as crying, as not being able to handle themselves in these situations. And there's nothing against having that reaction, but I, I don't think it shows the entire landscape. And I think it shows a very narrow viewpoint of, you know, what it means to be an investigator. And, you know, that's not just our field, it's every single field of women everywhere. You know, we're kind of boxed into this, into this role. And it's interesting when we are specifically talking about the paranormal and specifically media, because, you know, you begin to realize how ingrained those stereotypes really are in our culture. You know, men are thought of fo as followers. Women are, you know, they're supposed to be um, submissive. Men are leaders, women are not. Men are teachers, women are not. You know, um, men need to be protectors, women need to be protected. And it has not been my experience when I've worked with female investigators that they really fit those stereotypes. Um, I've met a lot of women that I think are more, you know, more willing to do kind of the scary work uh, more so than some of our male colleagues. Um, but I, I, I don't really want to say that it's all gender based, you know, because it's not, it's, it's an individual person and how they react in these situations and how they want to handle these situations. But I think you can certainly see the evidence of, you know, certain ways of how we think about gender roles in our field, um, specifically in the media. So I think it's great that we're finally taking those steps to show that there's a variety of investigators and how we react and handle ourselves. Well, you guys certainly are trailblazers in helping break all of those stereotypes. Is there anything, Katrina, when you were saying people are coming up to you at, at, at cons, um, you know, what do you think women bring to an investigation that is different that people are connecting with um you know i really think it's more about the individual and not so much gender at that point i think everybody has their own specific gifts and what they're really good at what their strong suits are and what you know uh, maybe they need a little bit more work on i would say in general and this is just a very general statement that i tend to meet more women who tend to be more sensitive to whatever this energy is out there. But with that being said, I've met a lot of men who are too. Um, so I don't know that I can really pinpoint something gender specific there. What about you, Amy? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like um, kind of along those lines, like I think that as an investigator, you always go into an investigation um, trying to figure out how you fit in that particular case. You know, what, what can, what part of you will, um, will help you get answers as to what's going on. So as, as a woman and now as a, as a mom, like I found I've just become a lot more maternal and sensitive and um, in those kinds of cases, you know, not to say, like Katrina was saying, not to say that's just because I'm a woman, but that is something that I feel and I'm able to bring to an investigation now um, as I've grown as a person. So um, I think that's just one of the key parts of investigating is finding what it is about yourself or what your strong suit is that you can bring into that particular investigation, you know, and that's how Adam and I work off each other so well. We know, you know, what, what each of us will bring to that particular case, so. What about you, Cindy? You know, I really think vulnerability is actually a superpower <laughs> because, um, you have to be vulnerable to walk into an investigation as a medium and be open. You're being vulnerable, but it's actually a strength. So I think it's kind of cool to be able to show people like being vulnerable is cool and it can be your strength and it can be your superpower. And even to the men out there watching, like it's cool to be vulnerable. That's how we get stuff done. So that's how I feel about it. You know, it doesn't have to be man, woman. It's just about being open and being, you know, willing to have the experience and knowing that you have strength in that. Well, it all kind of leads me to my next question. I'm looking at you, Chelsea, because I'm curious about this. Um, have you guys, do you guys notice that there's, you might experience paranormal activity different from some of your, your, your male co-hosts or, uh, you know, when you walk into a location, is there certain kinds of, you know, um, are you, do you find that you're more sensitive to certain energies or temperature fluctuations? And Chelsea, I'm thinking about you growing up in a house with your brother. Um, did you notice you had different experiences or did you experience the same kind of activity? Anyone who's really pursued paranormal or been to any haunted places, there's always like this disclaimer that's like, this tends to happen to women. It's like, it's literally, I hear it all the time. It's like, whether it's physical, audible, any of that. I'm, I'm always like, why is there always a disclaimer like that, you know? Um, but it's so true. It, it really has, I'm, I'm with three guys on the show and it's very evident that we all experience different things. And we you know the, the most notable moment I would say for me was in Brushy Mountain State Penitentiary, our very first episode ever filmed. Um, I was sleeping outside of the infamous James Earl Ray cell and Obulus was just spitting out these words like squeeze, kiss, um, paranormal, good night. It was just the creepiest like mix of words and safe to say like that really like humbled me because I was incredibly scared and I think I went in with a little bit too much confidence for being so new. Um, but at the same time, none of the, the obvious didn't say anything when my brother was holding it. And, you know, there's definitely different experiences that we've had. Um, and there's no denying that. What about you, Katrina? Have you had different experiences you think because you're a woman? I don't know if I can definitively answer that. I agree with Chelsea though. Like, I mean, there's so many places where you go where, you know, when you're interviewing people, they will tell you only women experience this here or only men experience this type of activity. Um, but I don't know that I've always found that to be the case that those statements are true. I think in general, it's so hard to really put a definitive on any of the questions in the paranormal because at the end of the day, we don't know what it is. I mean, literally paranormal means something that science cannot explain. So we're still exploring, you know, um, and we have a lot of work to, to do, but um, I, I don't know that it's been my experience where I've seen that to be the case, really. I think, it, again, it comes down to the individual. What about you, Amy? Same? Our theory is that what we're dealing with is human in nature. And so if you go into an investigation um, and say you're investigating a place like a prison or something that was an all male prison and you send a girl in there by herself, like the activity would probably be different in that case versus sending a guy in by himself. And so I think that's where it makes a difference. It's just, it depends on, you know, what the history is there, what the scenario is there. And so, you know, it can be vice versa. And so I just, I think we're noting that more, um, just 
you know, is when you kind of humanize it and you put that, like those personality traits on these spirits, then you can understand why they might react differently to a different gender going into a different area. That makes sense. And then what about you, Cindy, uh, in the paranormal world, but then also in the psychic medium world, have you felt that there's, that you've seen anything that you've experienced that's different because you're a woman? I think with, with mediumship and feeling the spirit world, you know, I think spirits communicate a certain way based on how we can have the experience with them. So if there's a woman who lost a baby, maybe that woman will come to me because I could be a mother because I'm more sensitive that way. It can bring out a stronger emotion, which, you know, is a reaction that people will pay attention to because I can feel it so intensely. Maybe a male spirit that suffered with, with anger issues might go towards a male who also had similar issues to get those emotions to come out to get the point across. So it does have to do with how the spirit is experiencing their own existence on the other side and how they think they can get their message out as quickly as possible. And sometimes they'll go towards people that they know will be able to I guess, display those emotions more quickly. Does that make sense? Yeah, so yeah, it, it's, it's kind of this dance that we're doing between people and the spirit world. So I think that that has something to do with it, uh, honestly. Well, and Katrina and Amy, you two are the veterans of the panel. So I'm curious um, to hear from you how things have changed from when you first started in the field. Katrina, do you want to start? Well, this kind of ties back into media because, right, a lot of things that people know about what a haunting is ties into movies and books. Um, so I've seen a lot of those things go away. Um, people are more open, I think, to, I guess, kind of the more heady space of a haunting versus it's got to be a person who died and now they're back because they have unfinished business, right? That's kind of the universal view of what a haunting is. But I've definitely seen those those horizons broaden a lot. And I think part of that is because of shows like the ones on Travel Channel that we do, it's just more education for people. It's, it's, it really sparks some people to get involved and to you know do deep dives themselves about what is and what isn't. I think that's probably been the biggest change aside from also women taking more leadership roles. What about yeah. you, Amy? That's kind of, I mean, that's a lot, a lot of what I was going to say is just, I love seeing the field just kind of evolve and become more dynamic and um, people really thinking outside the box as far as what the paranormal is. Because I think that, you know, I remember years ago, you know, starting this and really thinking I knew what a ghost was, you know, that it just fit that whole like generic, like, okay, you know, it's like Katrina said, someone's left here with unfinished business. They didn't go to the light. Um, I guess that the, the the strange byproduct of that is that after all these years, I feel like I know even less what a spirit or ghost yeah. is. Um, <laughs> but I've learned that there's no wrong answer as far as trying different things, you know, different equipment, different techniques, you know, you know, thinking outside the box as far as, uh, you know, ritual magic, mediums, uh, energy work, like it, it, it all kind of ties in and it's, you know, it's really fun um, to kind of watch the field grow. And I, you know, some people like uh, kind of poo-poo the idea of paranormal television, but I honestly feel like paranormal television is hugely responsible for a lot of these kind of um, think outside the box moments because we're always trying to think of something new and innovative to show the audience. And that kind of drives forward a lot of this, this research and these methodologies. So, um, so it's, it's been really interesting to watch for sure. Something that I'll point out that I know Amy, you and I have talked a lot about this and I'd love to highlight in all of your shows that you do um, is that you guys, you're not just going in to try and get evidence and show evidence. And of course we wanna see that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, we wanna tune in and we wanna see, we wanna hear, uh, you know, what you might capture. But um, I do love that all of you really deep dive to try and understand who or what might be in that space. Um, and I think I've noticed that, and I, I credit all of you guys for helping lead that, lead that charge with all of your shows. So thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and so 
we've talked about you've gone to all of these crazy places it's undeniable you're all fearless that you'll walk into these places even if as cindy says you walk in vulnerable you're still fearless to walk into all of these places but there is there a scary moment that you just cannot forget in any of those places um chelsea let's start with you i have like a hands down just like definitely this is my scariest moment. Uh, I know I have a lot less experience than everyone else, so my my reel is a lot less, but um, this one scared me really bad. Um, it happened at um, Sweet Spring Sanitarium in West Virginia, and it was kind of one of those locations where, you know, I didn't really know a lot about. It was kind of like a hidden gem because we really didn't know what to expect going into it. And something had just happened in the basement where we were all just trying to put our stories together because one part about being isolated, if you all experience something, you have to like reconvene and try to explain to each other what you heard and it's kind of a confusing moment. And out of nowhere, over our own voices, there was like this super audible human-like scream that just like went over all of our voices. And you know, my reaction is just to scream right back because it was like that type of moment where it wasn't like, I want to know what's going on. It was more like, I want to get the heck out of here because that sounded like a person. Um, so by far, that was the most like scary moment for me. Um, you know, a lot of these buildings are, you know, they're not only huge and we do do a check to make sure like no one's in the building beforehand and all that, which is obviously not entertaining. So it's not shown. Um, but there's still all these access points in these locations. So in the back of my mind, I'm always thinking, okay, it could be paranormal, but it also could really be a person. And I would say for me, that would be my most scary moment. What about you, Katrina? Scariest moment for me, um, I've had many, but uh, I think I was over in England investigating a place that um, in America we call Black Monk House. In the UK, they call it 30 East Drive. And it's a haunting that's been going on since at least 1966, possibly longer. And I was investigating this uh, this cute little closet that they call the coal hole because that's where they keep their coal, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and um, there was a story that went along with that closet that the owner of the house back in the 60s, at some point, he got locked in there. And when he came out, he was a completely changed man. Wouldn't tell anybody what happened to him. But um, it was evident that something did happen to him. And what's weird is that there's no lock on the door. So, and there never was. So nobody really knows how he got stuck in that closet and he was there for hours. Um, and I was standing there and I was getting ready to investigate and I could feel that something was wrong. And I all of a sudden started to feel this intense burning on my lower abdomen. And I know from an interviewing, like probably over a thousand people at this point, that when they describe a supernatural scratch, um, meaning a scratch that they don't know the origin of, they all describe it as this very intense burning, the most intense burning they've ever felt. And that's what was happening to me. So immediately in my head, I was like, there's, there's no way, there's no way this is happening. And I was wearing two shirts, my nails were freshly filed, they were at my side, and I lifted up my two shirts, and sure enough, there were two fresh scratch marks, um, and mm -hmm. one of them had broken the skin. Funny enough, what kept going through my head was um, the words of Lorraine Warren, um, who she was a religious demonologist. So she comes from a very specific point in the paranormal field. Um, and her beliefs were very much aligned with the Catholic Church that, you know, there are demons and if you get a scratch, that means there's a demon. And so that kind of stuff was running through my head of like, crap, <laughs> like, you know, Lorraine was right. And um, I was very scared and I wanted to cry and I wanted to run out of that house. Um, but I am stubborn as a bull, so I did not allow myself to do that. But uh, th that was a scary moment. I bet, I bet that is terrifying. What about you, Amy? Um, uh, mine is uh, probably when I thought I was maybe getting hit by a train, <laughs> a ghost train. <laughs> that was in a, this, <laughs> when we were investigating the Crocker Tavern House. Again, this is one of those moments where we kind of thought outside the box and we, we speculated that the spirit haunting this tavern was actually a, a woman who had been hit by a train. Uh, she was in a car and uh, four women and uh, three of them perished in this crash. The trains don't run in Cape Cod in the winter. They're only there for summer use. So we knew that like there were no trains coming or anything like that. And as I was on the tracks, 
um, just feeling very unsure and uneasy, uh, all of a sudden the train alarm went off, the ding, 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 and all the lights went off and everything by themselves. And so I'm standing there and I'm, I have this range of emotions from, holy crap, I'm gonna get hit by a train. Is there a train? Wait, if there's a train, that means Adam was right. <laughs> um, oh no, is this, is this, and, and, and like it dawned on us that this was happening at the same time as when Adam in the, the house, he heard the word ow in his ears at the exact same moment that the train uh, alarm had gone off. Uh, and so that was one of those rare moments where I was like, okay, we're done. Let's get in the car. We're leaving. We've done enough here. <laughs> like it was, um, but yeah, that was, that's probably to this day, my most terrifying moment. I think that was season three <laughs> that happened. Oh my wow. goodness. <laughs> Cindy, what about you? Well, I have a couple. Um, Bobby Mackey's with Portals to Hell was one of the scariest, by far scariest locations I've been to. And also after leaving, it followed me. I mean, I pulled open my Delta, I fly the Delta, and I was looking at how many miles I earned from my round trip to and from Bobby Mackey's, and it was 6,666. Like, I'm not oh. kidding. I took a picture of it, and I was like, oh my God, what? <laughs> it was terrifying. So that place scared the crap out of me, honestly. And then the nap house with Holzer Files was also scary um, because I did hear direct voice phenomenon, and I think people think because I'm a medium, that stuff doesn't startle me, but it absolutely does because I'm so used to hearing spirits in my mind or feeling it or seeing imagery right but when I hear the direct voice phenomenon I get freaked out like everybody else so those two places I think as of now probably the scariest I've been so far okay so now that we've heard about your most terrifying spot and experience what about your all-time favorite haunted spot is there a place that I mean it could be your scariest but most active or just a really cool a cool place that you've been. Waverly Hills in Kentucky always shines for me. It's just one of those spaces where I feel like, especially now people are starting to do a lot more work there where they're looking at it less as a novelty, but more as like, oh, there's actual spirits here that have stories that need to be told. And like, I love seeing it shift from that. And, um, you know, and then just in good old fashioned scary, like you go in there and something always happens. So, um, so yeah, I would say Waverly Hills uh, is definitely my, my number one today. <laughs> Katrina, what's your pick? Um, you know, same with Amy. It's, it's always just hard to pick one because it's kind of like picking your favorite child in a weird way. <laughs> You're a very weird <laughs> child, but, um, uh, I usually say Trans Allegheny. Um, I had a really, like incredible experience there. And um, I think it's a very special place for activity. And, uh, you know, the owners there are doing an incredible job restoring it and they're very welcoming to investigators. So it's always um, one of my top choices. What about you, Cindy? You know, um, it, is, it's, it is hard to pick, but I think Holzer Files, the episode we did in Metuchen, New Jersey was one of my favorites. I tend to really like the, the hauntings that have a really cool story behind them. And there was this whole Native American story that tied in and it was connected to the land. And we were really playing with the concept of past, present and future happening simultaneously, which I believe is something to really think about. So that was one of my favorite episodes. And what about you, Chelsea? I have to say Sweet Spring Sanitarium, um, just because it's such a cool um, building. Like even before all the scary stuff happened, um, you know, you have like this literally spring, this hot spring right in the front and it's just like bubbling and it just kind of like sets the mood. It's like you're relaxed, but you're also like, a, it's a little eerie. Um, and then you have the history, it was a hotel, it was a camping ground for soldiers, it was a tuberculosis center, it was a poor farm, it was all these things that just kind of make you dive back into time a little bit and just take that time that history deserves. And I would say Sweet Springs really did that for me. That is very cool. Well, what advice would you give any women or young girls who might be watching this and are interested in getting involved in the paranormal community. You know, Amy, I'm going to start with you because you have a young girl that you take to a lot of these places. <laughs> so what advice would you give her or, uh, or any other women who are, who are looking to get into this field? 
the paranormal is something you have to do for the love of it. Like it's one of those things where like, um, it, it is a really intense hobby that I did for a very long time and it can get very expensive and it's a lot of, um, uh, you know, traveling and things, but it, it's also super rewarding. It's really great to be able to go out and meet like-minded people who have the same kind of belief system as you do. So, you know, I always tell people to pursue it as a hobby first and, and read as much as you can on it, not just, and, and read things that don't necessarily fit with your idea of what's going on. Think of what other people are speculating and, and what their theories are, you know, and, and try to familiarize yourself with things like psychology and religion and sociology and like really get like a well-rounded idea um, of, of what the paranormal field is, but also what other things can be mistaken for the paranormal. That's why I tell people to start with, and there's so much information out there. So that's, that's a good place to start. And if you get through all that, then, you know, then, then, you know, you've found something that you, you love and you can pursue so many other parts of it. And Cindy, what about you? Yeah, I totally agree with Amy because there are so many different ways people view paranormal around the world. So educating yourselves about the different cultures and religions and belief systems is very, very important, but also just be you, be yourself, you know, follow your own path. I think it's so important for each of us to, to walk in our own path and find out who we are and what we love and not try to be, I guess, a mini me of anybody else and to be strong and find your power. And vulnerability is a superpower. I'm going to say it again, because it truly is. So embrace that. And Chelsea, what would you share? You know, Amy, like totally hit, a, hit the nail on the head. I'm the, in the early stages of my career. And right now it totally is a hobby. I'm an experiencer. This is something I'm going to be continuously learning about for a very long time. Uh, I'm lucky to be on this panel because it's actually very informative for someone like me, who's kind of like that liaison between you guys were super established and you know have been doing this for a very long time and the common man who might be interested or common woman um, who might be interested in taking that first step um so for me my advice would just be you know to take chances you know this obviously was something that was a fear um the paranormal was something i was really scared of growing up because the haunted living in a haunted house was not like an exciting thing for me. It was like more of a scary thing. Um, but to find that growth in facing things that scare you and to do it, even if it's something that you're uncomfortable with, there's going to be so many opportunities in life, so many doors that open that, you know, might look scary at first. And to just take that opportunity, walk through the door and you know, learn from those who have gone before you and to just make the most of the experience. What about you, Katrina? Yeah, um, agree with every single one of them. Um, and Amy, I absolutely hit it on the head, you know, education, education, education. Um, you have to, I think one of the most challenging parts about if you want to be an investigator is you have to check your own personal belief system at the door all the time. Mm -hmm. And it's going to creep up. Um, but you always have to remain objective and keep that skeptical lens on and look at things from every angle. Um, and, you know, I think it's, it's, if you're a screamer, you're a screamer. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, um, we all go at our own pace and we all find our journey through this. And so I, I would just say my advice for a woman in the field or a young girl who wants to get into it is if you want to be in the leadership roles, don't be afraid to do it. Um, I think one of the things that I know I experienced as a woman in the field is constantly being told I had to take the back seat. And um, usually for a male, even if we have the same exper experiences and the same level of skills. Um, so I would say if you're a girl or a woman in the field who wants to move forward, don't be afraid to go after that. And, um, you know, but if you don't want to be, you don't have to be a leader, you know, it's, there's nothing wrong with taking um, a secondary role in, as an investigator. So I think it's just, you know, being true to you and definitely education. And um, also a big one, work with people you trust mm -hmm. um, because you're going to oh, yes. be relying on people's eyewitness accounts. Yep. And so you really got to, like, if your partner comes to you and says they saw a figure, you got to be able to trust their instincts and their eyewitness accounts and that they can be objective. Um, so that's a biggie I found too. Totally. 
the, the last thing I want to talk about is you can't talk about women in paranormal without talking about Lorraine Warren, who is the original Wonder Woman of paranormal. Um, as an investigator and a medium, she began her career in the 50s and was a pioneer in the field, having worked on such famous cases as Annabelle the Doll, the Amityville Horror House, and the infamous home that inspired the Conjuring films. Um, and Travel Channel is thrilled to announce a series of upcoming documentary specials entitled Shock Docs, where each one will dig into a different thrilling paranormal subject. And we're excited to kick off the series at the end of the summer with Devil's Road, the true story of N. Lorraine Warren. It'll take a look at their lives and lasting impact of all of the Warrens' work. And as a sneak peek for this audience, we're gonna share a never before seen clip from the special. Uh, but before we do that, I wanted to uh, ask Katrina, I know you've worked with Lorraine in the past. And so is there anything you'd like to share about her? Yeah, I worked with Lorraine for a very long time. Um, it was actually when I was starting out in the field, which was amazing. Um, uh, two stories that I think really highlight her spirit that I, I have of her. There was an investigation that we were doing in Maine and the case was getting really, really dark, very fast. And it was, I don't even know what time, like very early hours in the morning, like 2 a.m. And we were all like, oh, we just want to go to bed. We just want this night to be over. And Lorraine's like in this full, very classy getup of like a, a skirt and a scarf and a pin. And she's like, oh, come on. Like, we got to get out into those woods and look for things. And, you know, she would hike up her skirt and go into those woods, trekking around in her Burberry. And I mean, it was really, it was incredible because this 80 year old woman outdid every single one of us, you know? Um, and that was amazing to see. And she was always like that. The other thing I'll highlight about her, um, you know, Lorraine had a lot of special gifts. Um, obviously she was a medium, she was an investigator, but I personally think the most special gift she had was her ability to communicate with people. And what I've seen Lorraine do uh, more times than I can count was she would come into a case and she was able to heal them on just a very human level that I think really takes a special, a special talent. It's not something everybody possesses. And I think if that, if she had any gifts, if you're skeptical of anything about her, I mean, that was really, she was a very special human that way. Um, and I think, you know, there's, there's always been talks about the Warren cases, whether or not they were real or not. Um, but I think regardless of what people think about that, you can't deny that she opened the doorway for all of us to be on this panel right now. Um, and that is something I very much am always grateful to her for. That's amazing. Well, let's take a look at this video featuring Lorraine's experience with the Amityville Horror House. The very first night that Ed and I went to that home, I was fearful, but I didn't know what I was fearful of. I took with me a relic of a very pious priest and I asked many clergy of different faiths to enter that home with us in spirit and prayers to protect us. When the Lutzes said they fled in terror, they weren't kidding, they left everything there. It looked like you might have just gone out to go to school, work, run some errands. Everything was just the way they left it. The media asked me to go on to the second floor to tell them what I felt. And as I was going up the stairs, I reached a point where it felt as if a force of, of water coming against my chest, almost like a waterfall. It was the, the worst feeling. I stopped on the landing and held tight to the relic that was in my hand and asked for strength and direction in going forward. It felt ominous to me. There was something inhuman or very, very negative. Well, this has been an amazing panel and conversation. Thank you all for joining us today and sharing your incredible insight and experience as true Wonder Women of Paranormal. And please keep doing what you do and inspiring both men and women and being the fearless superstars that you are. 
Everyone watching can follow at Travel Channel on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for all the latest news and announcements, including updates about your favorite stars here today. And you can also visit TravelChannel.com for more information on when new episodes of their hit series will return. Thank you to everyone for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. So Bye. fun. <laughs>